Hello, this is Eric of Not Bio Studio, and today I'm reviewing the Rode Lavalier 2. And you might wonder, why a lavalier microphone? Because I can move around anywhere and not have to worry about bumping into my microphone right there. And here is the Rode Lavalier 2. Comes in a hard case, and it has all the goodies inside. I took out the paperwork, but I'll show you everything inside right now. We also have our little foam muffler. We also have our fur muffler for going outside. In the package, we also have silica. We have register your device and we have safety and regulation stuff. We also have these little rings, which we'll go over in a minute because we are getting to the microphone. The microphone itself has this little lock ring that is removable, makes it very convenient to connect to different devices, and it just simply screws into place. We also have that little ring along here. So this little ring itself is connected right now, and we can see it right there, and we can now see the gap. So that's what these rings are for. And to put it back into place is as simple as sliding it into spot. And there we go. The microphone itself is just a small little capsule that's fairly flat. And this gives it a bigger diaphragm so we can generally, technically, get more sound out of a small lavalier. The length of this lavalier from top to usable connecting part is 46 and a half inches or 118 centimeters. That is 1.18 meters. When it comes to our clip here, Rode kind of made a mistake because it doesn't clip on very secure, but there is a way to secure it. Here's the way not so much to do it because if we look here, we have a crazy big gap, which allows me to simply pull it off without much force whatsoever. Now the way to really clip it in properly so it holds in place is take advantage of that smaller side right here. Now what we'll do to clip it in is we'll just put it in the hole along our main part of a lavalier and we're going to slide it in and then we angle it. Now I got that just about done because I have to angle it into the groove properly and here it is. There we go. And this way I have the capsule out here when it's connected. So it's going to connect on my shirt like so with our gap right here, so the capsule remains out like so. Perfect. Let's get this connected to my audio interface. I'm going to be connecting this to the Vocaster 2, so I get nice clean audio out of this particular microphone. If I connect it to a wired lab, our results will vary. I can also connect to my digital camera, which I'll test momentarily. We are now listening to our bare wired lavalier. Mic test one, two, three. 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 When it comes to this capsule, we're not going to so much close of it if we had the microphone facing this way. However, if we face this way, we can really close of this microphone easy. And that's, of course, where our foam comes into play. Mic test one, two, three. 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 I disconnected the sleeve and that was how I need to connect this particular lavalier to my digital camera. How am I coming through? My Sony ZV-1 is volume 6 out of 30. You might be thinking, why a lavalier microphone? Well, for one, if you do reviews like I do, this thing gets in the way. You can't move your hands really around. You have to be careful where you are. And for the best sound, you want up close and personal microphone. But if you're turning around and I have to go to the computer here, I'm going to be the same sound as if I turn around or whatnot. And uh, the one problem is this is a membrane keyboard. MX keys. You can hear it. If I get a mechanical keyboard and I was a gamer, you'd really not like this. 
And yeah, that's how loud this is compared to my talking. So it picks up everything. There are different lavalier microphones that don't pick up everything, but then it's more directional, which means you need it closer to your mouth for those type of microphones versus omnidirectional all around you sound. But let's get outside and check out with the fur muff and wind noise rejection. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm using my Zoom F3 to record this. And uh, let's see if I get this out without screwing things up. Do, 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 do. With my Rode, let's see, Rode VXLR Pro. And this allows me to record internally with this device. We can see I'm recording right now. My 32-bit flow is enabled. And I'm going to move that audio here to my camera, which is recording the audio of me right now with my little foam mafia on, and we're gonna go outside and see how this sounds as we go into the non-noise treated echoey hallway, which let's see, go back in this echo place. Can we hear all the echo? I can definitely hear it for sure. And just to see how that reacts. And let's go outside in the wind with the foam on. And then of course we'll change the fur in a moment just to see how much the the foam itself rejects noise. Now if the foam was flipped, well the microphone itself was flipped the other way around, it would reject more wind noise because right now the capsule is facing out. And let's get a little further out into the wind. Let's see if we get a nice breeze. Ah there, okay. Got a good breeze. And now I'm gonna switch it over. Don't know how the wind's coming through, if we can hear a lot or not, but I'm facing right to it. And there is quite a bit of wind outside. If I had hair, it would be flying around. But it's really not there. Now for good measure, let's do a self noise test. I'm going to be silent and then I'll point to the camera when to turn down your speakers. All microphones, even wired lavaliers, have some form of self noise. Now let's listen to the silence. Okay. Now I turn down my microphone and I should be able to shout fairly loud without clipping this microphone. Testing, testing, one, two, three. How am I coming through? The Rode Lavalier 2 has fantastic audio quality for the price paid. That clip is kind of ridiculous because clipping the other ways I show in this video is how it holds better, including the foam muff holding better as well. When it comes to dynamic range, it actually is pretty decent and doesn't sound monotone at all. Let's do a quick tone test before we conclude this. This is a deep sound and we can go higher, higher. Yeah, you get the picture. But yeah, we got some dynamic range on this microphone. If you have any questions about the Rode Lavalier 2, leave it down below. What are your thoughts and what is your experience with this particular wired lab, including, don't forget to subscribe and watch for this review, the Ceremonic Blink 500 Pro X with better built-in sound, including other lavaliers all compared the Sennheiser MKE Essential and a professional wired lavalier that's used in the movie industry that costs more than this and this and probably more than this as well combined and that's just a wired lavalier. What's the difference? Well, find out and subscribe to Not Bows and help this channel grow and if you're subscribed already, thank you very much. You are awesome. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.